Doc Einstein, Jesus, wow, so many folks here. Great to see you all, right? All right, let's get back to, to productivity, right? Um, there's been so much things putting on the shoulders of developers these days. Um, you, you just saw that. Whoa, this was, this was fast. Uh, just like going one back. All right, so much things on the putting on the shoulders of developers these days. Um, and uh, now everyone is asking for productivity, just like getting back to productivity. I see that a lot with, with some uh, CTOs coming to me and says, now we want to have productivity back into software development. Where does that come from? Where does that come from? So just like uh, my name is Sven, I work for Atlassian, and I'm going to take you on a little bit of a time travel. So we're going to travel back in time here. Um, are, you, are, you, are you fine with that? Are you good? Yeah, OK, great. Um, so stare at the slides, and then we're going to travel back 125 years in time to see where this productivity comes from uh, obsession, right? So we are back in the Bethlehem Steel Factory. Um, the year is 1898, uh, and uh, the Limb Steel Factory had some productivity issues. So at that time, there was no McKinsey or Boston Consulting Group they could call. Um, so they hired one person to just like uh, work on the productivity issues. And his name was Frederick Winslow Taylor. You might have heard of him, famous for his Taylorism, right? Uh, so what Frederick Winslow Taylor did was he was just like measuring, measuring the productivity of the, of, the, of the workers. So how much time do they need to shuffle coal, right? And then he found out that a lot of coal was just like falling down the shuffle. So he made custom-made custom tools for them. So custom-made shuffles to just like, and, and guess what? They could shuffle more. Productivity increased. Great. The next thing he did, he was just like measuring how much these people could carry out the day. In the morning, they could carry a lot of things, right? And then in the evening, just like, yeah, of course, yeah, uh, productivity just like goes down and they couldn't carry, carry as much. So what he did is actually he gave them breaks in between the day to just like gain more, gain more, more strength so they could carry more throughout the whole day. And all over all, he increased the productivity of the factory workers by 400%. Wow, this is incredible, right? But everything comes with the flip side, right? So also the workers, they were just like doing repetitive tasks. So they were, did that, they were doing just like things over and over again because Frederick Winslow Taylor, he told them uh, what, what they should do, and they were just like doing it. And then uh, the, the, the managers were actually, were actually doing the, the, the thinking, right? So he introduced the managers to, to do the thinking. So this is 125 years ago. Right? Let's travel back in the year 2023 and talk about productivity of developers right now. Right? Um, so how do we measure productivity of developers? So in my first job, actually, uh, my boss told me just like count the lines of code, right? How much you add it. We know this is just like a stupid idea, right? To let count the lines of code, just like and measure productivity by that. Then people came up with, oh, let's, let's count the issues that we put into done. Well, we have bigger and smaller issues. Then people said, okay, let's count the story points, right? How, we can, how much we can fit in the sprint. Well, the story points are just an estimation and not really how productive we are. Then story points are too complicated, so we took t-shirt sizes. Now we just like say cycle time, deployment frequency, and what are we doing with all those metrics, right? Managers come in and say, yeah, we increase it. That's like 20% faster pull requests, right? So we need 24 faster reviews, right? Um, so all of these things just like seems like a little bit like coming back from 125 years ago, yeah? Thank you very much, Frederick Winslow Taylor, for that. So here's the thing. We should go back to just like develop a joy, right? We, need, we want to enjoy what we're doing, and guess what? If you just like enjoy and work on your code quality and work with great code, if your software, or if, your, if your tasks flow fast through your systems, you enjoy what you're doing. If you create value for your customers and you're proud of what you're doing, you actually create, you are actually productive, right? So I'll give you a few examples how teams just like try to improve their productivity and reinvented themselves a bit. Um, and the first thing is about developer flow, right? I love developer flow. I just like when I'm in the flow, just like I can, I forget everything. I'm just like in thinking in code. That is, that is great, right? But there's more to software development than just like 
coding, right? There is building and testing. Yeah, we're waiting for that sometimes, and then there's deployment. And we can optimize, optimize those things, right? Just like get, get the testing down, just like parallelize your tests, great, uh, or get the deployment da down, just like deployment time down. So all of this we can optimize. But there's one thing that really takes a lot of time, and it's this here, the review phase, right? Um, so reviews can take days. Actually, we, we, we actually have measured the review uh, time at Alassian, um, and the average is actually three days from opening a pull request to merge it back into, into the main branch. So three days of just waiting or just like working on something else and then coming back and fixing the things that you did three days ago and you have to rethink. So we need to cut down that time. Actually, one team, they had uh, this open pull requests. So you know that there are some open pull requests there, and then your reviewers to attach to it. Um, so there was a team lead called Puneet Aurora. And Puneet did the following. He pinged every developer in the morning and says, you know what? That you, you are just like a reviewer on an open pull request. Please review that pull request so we can move on, right? OK, that's probably not a job for, for, for a team lead. So what the team did, actually, in a, in a, in a small hackathon, um, they replaced Puneet with a bot called the Puneet bot, right? Uh, and now the Puneet bot is just like pinging every, every uh, developer that's on an open pull request, a review on open pull request in the morning um, to review uh, the, the, the pull request. So And they cut down from three days to 1.2 days the review time. Great, great improvement here. So that means less wait time for developers and more developer joy, actually. So as I said, I'm obsessed with flow. So I want to show you some, some traffic junctions uh, and compare that with work. So let's, put a traffic, let's have a traffic junction there where, where there's totally chaos. No rules at all, just like. So cars can just like move wherever there's, there's space, right? And uh, in this simulation, the traffic flow is 191 cars vehicles per minute. So let add, uh, let's add some rules. Let's add some processes to, to this, right? This is not going to work. Uh, we need to add some processes. So what we do is actually we add traffic lights, right? So work is flowing this way, or cars are just going this way, and then they stop, and then cars are going that way, full speed, right? So traffic flow is 235 vehicles per minute. Great. All right, so, but this is not a very agile way of working, just like to stop and wait for, for another team to do stuff. Um, an agile way of working is more like this, right? The roundabout, right? So whenever there is a, whenever there's a slot when the design team has time, there's, if the work gets slotted in, there's actually a fast lane. So great, great. So let's, let's do that, right? Uh, so traffic flow is 360 cars per minute. But this is not the end, right? Now the ultimate, ultimate thing comes, right? And that is the stack interchange. Yeah. Looks complicated, right? Uh, but what it does is just like cars are not slowing down. The gate can just like merge into, into, into the next lane, right? And guess what? Simulation shows traffic flow is 1,099 cars per minute. But what does that mean for work, right? What does that mean for our developer work? Well, it means like we just like have autonomous teams. We don't have to wait for someone else. Just like we have autonomous teams that can drive their work through, through the pipelines. Um, well, so we need to, of course, align those teams. Otherwise, we will get chaos again. But what does that mean, just like autonomous teams, right? So we probably need designers on the team, designer on the team. We need ops people on the team. We need QA people on the team to just like whenever their work is ready, they can go move the work forward. Well, so there's a problem, actually, because we don't have enough designers at Alassian. Uh, to just like go on every team. And there's not enough work on every team just like a full-time designer. So how do we solve that? So a lot of companies solving that is like replacing it with developers, right? Developers can do the same work, right? Let's do that. Shift left, done, great. Um, so the Trello team actually had, had the same thing, right? So good old days, devs were doing the, the automated test and QA doing the exploratory test. Now the devs are actually doing the exploratory test to just like move things forward. And that means for the QA, they can drink pina colada and just like go on vacation. 
Well, it's not that way, right? So QA, actually, they actually reinvented themselves. They call not quality assurance. They call themselves quality assistance to help the developers to move things through the pipelines. Um, so how does that work? So for example, what they do, before a developer works on a user story, they sit together with a developer and write the exploratory test, the test cases, right? Um, so they do that, then the developer develops uh, uh, the, the feature, and afterwards, the developer tests, tests just like goes through the test, test plan and just like tests the feature and test and deploys it to production. This way, actually, the developer learns how to, how to write test cases and to test uh, their software themselves. At the same time, they get help by the QA people, uh, by, uh, get, get assistance by the QA people. So the QA people can do things like work on test out and test automation platform, just like work on the test database and all those things, right? So this is also what the test team does where the developers are not, not heavily involved in that, they're just like helping with that. So this means actually less developer cognitive load and more developer joy. This is what we want to do, right? We have, want to have more joy. All right, let's look a little bit at the product people, right? We want to also create great value for our customers. Um, so let's look at, at what the product people are, are normally doing. So they talk a lot to customers, to users, and just like build the thing in the heads of the users, just like what, what they imagine, right? And then just like figure, figure that things out. And then they squeeze it into a small little user story and give it to the developers. And the developer thinks like, oh, I know what we're going to build. I can, do, I can do actually better, right? I can build this cool car where there's an antenna uh, just like coming out so I can find my car in the parking lot, right? Great, great. So um, yeah, developers think just like they can just like do better, but not only developers think they can do better, also entrepreneurs think they can actually build cars better in a better way. Um, and what the product people are actually doing, they're doing a lot of upfront work, right? They're doing some research, measurements, interviews, experiments, and prototyping, right? With the, with the customers and think like they have the thing that they want to build with the customers. And as I said, they squeeze it into a small user story and give it to the developer and they're building running software. We need to be, as developers, more involved into, into this phase or just like get to know why we are building it to just like build the right software. So developers and product people need to work closer together. But also the other way around. Once we build the software, the product people need to come in and see what we are building to give us feedback. So the Jira team actually did that. Um, they're actually running regular demo sessions. So every two weeks, they come together and run a demo session of a, of a feature they are currently developing. And the demo sessions are actually built so everyone can join. Nowadays, it's a Zoom call, right? So you can just like join the Zoom call. There's a recording. You can watch that later uh, if you're in different time zones. But you can join the demo session. Everyone can join. The designers, the ops people, the developers, of course, and, and also the, the product people, right? So everyone joins, joins the, the demo. And it's outcome-oriented. So they don't talk about implementation details or something. They talk about creating custom, how we create customer value. And then it's a group thinking exercise that challenges the solution, and maybe product people come up and says, we know we have designed it this way. Uh, let's take that back to the customer. We're not sure if that is really working. Now we see that implemented in code. Um, see, looks, looks different. Um, and then also, don't forget to celebrate and recognize great work. You're all in the one, one room, and just like uh, be there and uh, build this, this feature all together. So just like, for, don't forget to celebrate. Well, this means actually less rework uh, frustration and more, more developer joy. Again, cool. But we know we are obsessed with measuring things, right? We want to measure things, and it gives us also good signals, right? Peter Ducker once said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So let's measure things. So where do we start with measuring things? Where should we start? What should we measure, right? So that's a good advice. Start with Dora. Uh, not with Dora the Explorer, but probably with the Dora metrics, um, the change failure rate, deployment frequency, you name it, just like start with that, with the Dora metrics. Um, but every team is different, and every product is different, and everything that we're building is different. So there's much more that we can measure, actually, and what makes sense for the team, the team needs to decide. So last thing we're using Compass, our own tool, to just like have scorecards, 
um, that the team sees, sees their values, how, how they, they're doing. And actually, also not only the measurements, but also we set baselines. So we see when things get, get, get orange or, or red, right? And then, as a team, we need to talk about this. There could be reasons why, why, why this thing gets red, because you're working on less like complicated things, and things take longer, complicated things in the code base, and things take longer, sure. Um, but we need to talk about that. So that's why we have a weekly ritual called Check Ops. So also the team gets together and talks about the metrics uh, that, that they see. And the, the thing is, a lot of people trying to trade software development or just measurement software development like a factory, like back in the Frederick Winslow Taylor time, we just like optimize these things out, just like make the, the plan time shorter or the, the review time shorter. All good things and it shows all good signals. But we are creative people, right? And de software development is a creative process. So software development is not a production line. We don't produce the same car over and over again. We just like do different things, right? So don't treat your software development as a production line. As I said, signals are great, but think about it, what, what you see, right? So there's another quote. Measure what is important, but don't make important what you can measure, right? So also, don't just like take the measurements and look at them and say, oh, we need to increase that or this. Um, also, ask your developers what's wrong, because they know actually what's wrong and what bothers them, right? Um, and we're doing this regularly, actually. Um, we call the Developer Joy Survey. So we're doing a survey and asking, how satisfied are you with your speed to ship quality code? Or how satisfied are you with your waiting time? How satisfied are you with your execution independence, running autonomous teams? Your access to tools, processes, and practices. How satisfied are you with your effort of managing external standards like security and governance? Um, and then how ex ex satisfied are you with managing your code pipeline, your ramp up time for new developers, how fast they can ramp up, and your developer satisfaction? How is that overall, right? So we are asking these questions, but not only, as I said, teams are different, right? So we also ask, how important is that for your team? How important is that? And out of these two scores, we, 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 we're calculating an opportunity score. And then if you're just like in the, in the white, white corridor there, things are okay. If you're falling below the white corridor, we have to talk about it and we have to may, may have to fix things here, right? So I took this internal developer joy survey. You can try it out yourself if you want. Um, I, I promise you I don't collect any email addresses so you can just like go try it out. And the next thing would be just if you, if, if you find something that you need to improve, just like go and try to fix things. And not only fixing things, that's great, but also share the learnings, right, with the whole organization. Just go and share, share, share the learnings, right? And, you know, the, the, the Punit bot, right? The team is, was writing a blog post about that, right? How it's done, what it's doing. So the whole company actually knows about this bot, right? And guess what? Now more teams are actually, actually using the, the Punit bot to improve their review time, just like to decrease their, their review time. So to sum this up, right? There are measurements, and they show you signals, how good you are and, and where you can improve things. But mix that with, with survey results and give that to your autonomous teams and give them also time to carve out time just like to, to fix things, right? To work on stuff and fix things, um, to improve their code quality, their, their developer flow, and the value they create for the customers. And as I said, if all three things come together, right? If you work on great code, if, you, if your work flows through the systems and it's fun, um, and you get, get great feedback from your, from your customers, Right? And I always want to do a Venn diagram in the talk. Um, now I did it. Right in the middle there. This is where developer joy is happening, right? We became developers for a reason. And I don't forget to have fun, right? We just like, we will need to celebrate our craft and bring back the joy into, into software development. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention.